I'm a Java backend developer in Autentia in Madrid, but I didn't get there in, like, in the more traditional way. I first started doing a PhD in Madrid about ontologies and semantic web, like really cool stuff. But when I finished, I decided that I wanted a more technical career, so I started working for Autentia. And in Autentia in particular, I've been working in this past year in the, their very first in-house product that is called Teams, and that is now even a, a company. And that we just launched like a few, week, few weeks ago, so hey. And it is a Java project, it is uh, built in with Spring Boot, and even if it is a real small project, we already have a couple of web applications, different interfaces, and at some point you want to be sure that your users are going to have the proper experience and that everything is going to work just fine. So you need to, you need to test your applications top to bottom and then you need functional tests. The problem with this kind of test is as soon as you just change something in your web, if you are using, if you are referencing that element in, a dif in different tests, all those tests will get uh, broken. So it's hard to maintain and some in the past also very ugly to see. Um, let's see how, how can we make our functional tests nice and maintainable. So first, I'm going to present two uh, frameworks um, Spock is a testing framework from 2008 and it's for testing Java and Groovy applications. We already had two talks about Spock uh, today, so I'm not going to go like really deep in here. Just that is open source and an Apache uh, 2 license. And the main characteristic is the tests are just beautiful and highly um, expressive. It follows a given when then extractor and it integrates really nice with JUnit thanks to the Sputnik runner. So let's see a test, but like really fast. Oh no. Yeah. Um, yay, it's maybe too much. Okay, yeah. So this is a Spock test. I have a very silly application. I'm just um, allowing to store new products and list them in a web. That's all it does. And the first thing we see is we need to extend from a specification. All the tests in Spock are called specifications. And we see that they integrate nice with Spring. This is a Spring Boot application. We can still use all the annotations, like inject a repository. And in the first test, you see that the name is just a string, plain text, so we can be really expressive. We have these blocks, the given, when, then, and each of the block, or each block can have also a string explaining what the block does. And in here, we are just saying, if, you, if we read, actually, given a new product, when the product is added to the repository, then the number of store product is one. So it's like really easy to understand. And we can just run the test to check that everything is working. And I don't like. Hey. Uh, so more things that we have here. I want to make my test transactional, so I can also use the Spring annotation for that. How can I test that my, I mean, in, I could also do like a cleanup block and then I manually delete the product, it's very just, I prefer to use transactional. And how can I be sure that the elements are being removed after the test? I can have another test, just checking that that after running the first test, my database, my repository is empty. But the tests don't have an order, so they could be running in the opposite way. We don't want that in this spe in specific case, so we use the stepwise. With this annotation, all the tests are going to be run in order. So if I run the whole specification, both tests will pass, and if I remove the transactional, 
and then I repeat, the second test will fail. And we can see also here how it tells us about the fail. And we not only have the expected and the actual value, we also have all the intermediate values. So we have that product is an array of product instances and we have the, the values of each attribute that the size method returns one and this is not equal to zero. So it reads also is very, give us a good feedback. So this is Spock. Let's move on. Jeb. The first thing we have to know about Jeb how to pronounce it, okay? When you go to the website, this is the first thing you see. Jeb, it's pronounced Jeb, not Hep, not Gep, not, I don't know, Jeb. It is a tool uh, for browser automation. It is from 2009. It's built in Groovy and on top of WebDriver. So it can do the same as you can do with uh, WebDriver, but in an easier way, in a nicely way. It is also open source, same license than Spock, and it has a jQuery oriented uh, navigation inspired navigation API. So if you are familiarized with jQuery, it's going to be very easy for you to, to write the JEP, um, test with JEP. It implements the page object pattern. That is a very important thing we will see right now. And even if uh, it can work with a lot of different testing frameworks, JUnit, Cucumber, or TestNG, but it works really well with Spock both share the same philosophy and the tests get, uh, are just nice. Page object. Um, as I was saying at the beginning of the talk, when I change something in my website, I don't want to go test over test, checking that I am using that element and then I have to correct it. I want to encapsulate the content of my web. I want to model this content and I can do that following this page object pattern. It was popularized by WebDriver and it reduces the amount of uh, duplicated code, improves the reusability, maintainability of course, and in JEP it is supported via the page and module constructs. So let's see the... Uh, yeah. Okay, our first uh, uh, test with JEP. Uh, in here, we are still we are going to start the application. So I have to add the annotation for for a Spring to know how to do it, and I also add the web integration test. These annotations makes the application to start before the test and to stop after the test. If I don't want to do that, because maybe this is useful when, when this is uh, running, I don't know, like in independently, but if I am just developing my test, maybe I don't want to wait every time. So I just don't put the annotation, I manually start the application and I just run my test. So the first thing we have to do is to create an instance of the browser. And this browser, it is from the JEP uh, dependency. And so we, we tell the browser to go to a slash products. This is a relative URL. I have defined the base URL in my config file. And then I check that in the browser, the current page contains an element H1, which text is exactly product list. Okay, again. This is going to create in this case a Firefox instance. Here it is. He just went to the URL and the, he found the, it found the, the text. So good. Um, just this just a curiosity if I change this Spock, as you saw, there's no any assert. All the asserts in Spock are implicit. Everything in the then block is understood as, a, as an asset. So I told you how 
Spock gives a lot of feedback when it fails. In the case of strings, this is like really somehow even too much. <laughs> it tells us <laughs> that it's a nest that is missing and the similarity is 92%. I mean, that's just cool. <laughs> okay, but if tomorrow I decide to change the text, if tomorrow I decide to remove the H1 element, this is going to break. So let's try to improve this. And we can do that by, instead of extending from a specification, let's just extend from a JEP spec. JEP spec comes from the integration between JEP and Spock. It is a different dependency we have to, to add. And in the first, yeah, oh, okay. In the first test, we have exactly the same as we had before. Differences, the browser comes implicit with the JEP spec. So I don't have to define it, I don't have to create a new instance of it. I can just say go to slash product and this is exactly equivalent to say browser that go product. And the same for the then block. Everything is delegated to the, um, to, to the browser, so everything I put here is going to be sent to the browser and to its page. But this is just have the same problems as before. I'm having here like very detailed information about my front, I don't want that. What we are going to do in the next test is to model my products page. And let's see how this is the page object pattern I was talking about. Three elements. The first one, the URL. Is, it tells uh, to Jeb where should I go if I want to move to the product page so I don't have to indicate it every time. The add condition tells uh, the browser, tells Jeb how to be sure that we are in the right page when, after we navigate it to the URL. And the content. In the content, we have, for example, here a heading, a table header, a list of products that are rows in my table, and a new button. So I can just define everything here. I can even reuse it in the add conditions, which is nice. And then I can use it in my test instead of using these uh, jQuery and CSS selectors. So, in here, since I, in this case I don't have a when and a then, uh, I just have a, a statement so I can use the expect block. Uh, I just say, go to products page. This two is going to do two things. The first one, go to the URL that is defined in my products page. And the second is to uh, assert my add condition. So after navigating there, if the add condition is not, uh, is not true, this test is going to fail. So, yeah, so you see that that's exactly the same as before. Cool. And the test was win. So more things we can see here. Okay, I, I can have a setup. So I say I'm going to introduce a new product in my repository, then I'm going to navigate to the products page and I am expecting to have at least one product in my table. Okay? So in this case, when the page comes up, It was too fast, but <laughs> it was there. Some more things. Um, yeah, we can, for example, click a button and then say, when I go to the products page and I click the new button, I'm going to move to the form page. Uh, let's see. And we can use the at to check that we are, that the at condition of the form page is true. If we go to this new page, this is a little bigger. We still have the URL, the add condition, and in the content, I have these three fields I have to fill in my form. The name, the category, 
and the amount. And the category, it is a drop down so, uh, input. So instead of being me, that I have to develop how to deal with this kind of input, I can just use the select module from JEP. A module is like a page, but it just contains a smaller fraction of my, of my page, and it can be reused in different pages. So in this case, I'm just reusing the, the own JEP uh, module select. I have different buttons to deal with my form. I can save the form, I can cancel and go back to the previous page, I can reset the values. And we can also have some optional things. For example, the errors. I'm not expecting errors to be there all the time, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> but they may appear. So I just can indicate with this require false that if I try to access this element and it's not there, that's okay. Otherwise, if I don't put that, uh, it will throw an exception. And I can even filter things. So uh, the errors for me is everything that it has did cl that class, but this type of a specific error, I can also put it in a different uh, variable and then filter by the text, for example. And I can also have these helper methods so instead of doing all the time, filling the form in my test, I just make a method and I say, okay, just put the values, click this in the submit, and that's all. So when we go back to our, to our test, whoop, yeah. and for example, we, in here, we say that we click this new button and then we are going to be in the form page. Yeah, we moved. And we can also actually fill the form. And in here, yeah, that's a nice thing. Um, in here, we are going directly to the form page. We are filling the form. We check that after filling the form and submitting, we are going back to the list. And we can check that in my repository, there is a new element. And I'm using for this, this very cool thing from Ruby. So if you, the people not from Ruby, this is really cool, we don't have that. And uh, we just use the alt, and it's going to store the previous value of the sentence, of the statement, statement, and then we will check the new one. So that's really nice. And this is cool because it's going to be feel alone. I mean, I really like that, you just look. I was talking about the errors. Let's just, here I'm, we are going to the form and I'm canceling and then I have to check that I went back to the previous page and no elements were added and that the reset is working. And in here, we are going to fill the form with grown values. In this case, we are having uh, a name blank and then we are going to check that after submitting, we are still at the form page and this optional field, this optional attribute, the may not be empty error, is present in my, in my web. Also, we check that no new elements were added to the repository and in this, this is very specific, uh, by default, when I'm running all the tests, I'm always using the same driver instance, the same Firefox. But uh, if I'm dealing with errors, we may want to just clear that and just be sure that the next test, the next execution will be with a new and clean uh, driver. So this is going, this is why I have to put this in this case. Yeah, and I know if you could see that, but it was like a red error line. Oui. And the rest is uh, more errors, a different uh, just selecting, having the, the category of my product empty. So this is cool, and now I want to use, uh, to show you a little more advanced, 
in a real case uh, examples. So in, I put everything in the same project, I mean just for the demo purposes, that is bad. <laughs> and now I'm changing my base URL, it's not the same in, like, in my config file, but I can always overwrite um, the, this value. And with this base URL, uh, this is equivalent to say browser dot set base URL and then give the value. Okay? I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do this, this test with, oh, okay, this is the mobile format because it, <laughs> okay, this is the Teams, my, my project, in, the project in which I, I work, and just a very, very brief, this is for companies and brands to coordinate the, public, the, the publication of posts in social networks, so I, for example, I'm really happy in my company and, or I really like a brand, I'm gonna post and I'm gonna tweet about them anymore. The thing is, instead of being me that I have to think what to say and when to say it, this is going to optimize that. But the company creates a campaign and it proposes some tweets, like for example, how awesome is Jeff, yeah! Or my colleague from Authentia that is right now in a parallel track <laughs> competing with me about parallel streams but he's also cool. And if I'm good with this, I can just say, okay, I accept, I participate, and those tweets will be automatically scheduled and posted without my, any extra interaction from me. But only once I accept it, of course. So you saw there is some interaction here. I click here, this opens. Okay, so I'm gonna test a little these things. And yeah, I also have to log in first, so you will see, because otherwise, that's why here, before each test, I had a little logic to, to just do the actual, the actual login. So, the first thing, we are going to go to that page, participations page, and let's see that if everything, the conditions and everything is right. As I told you, this is a little more complex, uh, oh, yeah, just, this is tricky, URLs, this is, if you have something like that and your base URL has these things and it's not just slash and I have, I have to be really careful with my slash. Uh, it is everything very well documented, but just have to be careful. Uh, the right way is to put it here and not here, otherwise it will be removed and I will go to the local host 8080. Okay, so just be advised. In this case, how can I know that I, I am in the right page? Because I have to, I need to see this top bar and since this is the, the mobile, I, I didn't know that it, it was look like that. Usually it has participate and has text. Okay? Uh, so I want to check that that is uh, selected the participation option and this is uh, made by this class top select in my, in my element and then I have as a content the, the menu bar which is a module of my own. Instead of just putting here all the code, I decided to encapsulate it. So if I go here, I have these links, for example one that goes to participate I can even indicate that when I click that link, it's going to navigate to this kind of page. So that's, that will be checked as well. And different links. And I also have a list of participations. And in this case, if I say all the participations have this deep box, they have, they have this class, this is going to return a list. And I want to, for each element of the list, create a participation module, okay? So I could do that instead of this. You can just make this participation module and normally this will be just enough. 
And if I want to put some arguments in my, in my constructor, because maybe the mod this module needs, in this case, an ID, I can also put it here. The problem with my case, oh, the problem is that this uh, attribute I need, I need to extract it from each element. So this is the way to do it. I do a collect, and then the it is each element in my list, and then for each element I create a module, a new instance, and then I access this attribute data target that stores my ID. So I can just put it in the constructor. This is the module. I have it here as a, just as, a, as an attribute of the, the module. And I don't need to actually write the constructor. I just need to, to put it here uh, with the dots, right? And very similar for the sidebars. Sidebars are these things that I have it, I had. And for each one, I need to, to create a, a new module. And you can see here, these selectors, I can say, okay, I need the div but I want the div that has an ID that starts with and then a string, okay? This, this comes uh, from out of the box with, with Jeff. So that's really cool. Oh, sorry, it was... Uh. Yeah, so if I go here and I just execute it, it's going to come here, it's going to lock me, and, yeah, oh, <laughs> okay, yeah, so I didn't expect to have the mobile version displayed, and if I, oh, do you think so? Yeah, okay, so this is going to be bad, because <laughs> it's not going to pass any of my tests. Um, yeah, I didn't expect that. Sorry. Mm. No, I mean, I'm gonna do this. Uh, bah. T -t 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 -t. Yeah, I cannot, I just have to remove this from my... E oh no. Yeah, here. Okay, so, oh, this is going to be bad. Man. Okay, no attacking, yay. Sorry, really, I didn't. I hope the rest things are working fine. So yeah, let's go to the page and instead of just checking that we are there because I just removed the add condition, so I'm always there. Um, let's check that at least I have one participation, okay? And yeah, actually you already saw that, so uh, in this case, I'm going to go there, I'm going to click in the box, and that means that my sidebar is going to be displayed. This is a little nicer. Let's try this one. No, it's not working any of them, so uh, I think I just cannot run them. Um, but I had, I had more like, yeah, you go there and then you can check that you, I had two Twitter posts and I can also, yeah, this is a cool thing. So when I participate, this is actually an Ajax call. So I have to wait for the call to come back, for the, for the response to come back. Uh, before checking that it was a change in my web. I want to wait for it. So I can use this, the wait for, and I put all my code there, and this is, is going to wait a default amount of seconds, but I can always change it in my config file. So I can say, I can even define like slow and quick, and so, so I, I can give them a uh, yeah, label. And, and you can also, this works like, well, maybe a more normal one, yeah. Uh, the same way I have the two, I have the require, I can also use the wait if I have one element in my page that requires a waiting time before being displayed. Okay, so this was a positive. 
Okay, one thing that I can run. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, I have reporting. And this is a really, really silly test. I'm just saying, go to the products page. You have to be at the form page. Obviously, no. The cool thing about JEP is, is if I extend from JEP reporting spec instead of JEP spec, it's going to actually take a picture of the web in the current status when the test fails. And I indicate in my config file the folder where I want to put all those pictures. So if I run this test, this is going to fail, but I'm expecting <laughs> it to do it. It failed, and then I have it, oh, this is huge. Ah, ah it doesn't, okay. Yeah, I think it's this thing, no. Okay, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. The picture. It takes a picture so I can see that I was expecting in my ad condition to say new product, and it's not true, it says product list, okay? And as a, oh, I was really, really quick. Uh, yeah. If you really need types for like living, you can do it. I can always do things like that. This has the advantage that my, in this case, my IntelliJ, Gives, helps me to, to fill the, the test. So I can always store the result to go into the product's type page into a new instance of this type. If this, is no, if this fails, then it can, be, it can do the instance, so this is going to fail in the same way. Exactly like in this case, I'm in this product page that is typed. I, I say that when I click the new button, I'm expecting to have a form type page, and I actually have a helper method to click this new button and say, okay, you have to return this. This was just an example, not actually really useful. Uh, everything can be done in, that, in this way. The film form, I can access the film form directly from the form page, from the instance, so when I'm writing, it's a little, it helps a little more. Uh, and then when I submit the form, I get the, the instance of this, of this page. And, and, and the same for and the errors, everything just using the, the instance. This test is working exactly in the same way. The problem is not so beautiful, it's not so nice, it's more verbose, but if you want to have to be a strong type, you can do it. Oh. So yeah, so I think I'm pretty much There's a lot of more things that I didn't put here because uh, I wasn't time. <laughs> I didn't know about the, the, the problem with my test. Um, so, things that you can have, JavaScript interface. If you need to access a method in your JavaScript, a global variable in the JavaScript of the current page, you can do it. You can access the JS object and that's cool and not the more recommendable thing to do, but if you need to do it, you can. You also can require and request the jQuery object for each CSS select selector. So I can just, uh, I can use this jQuery to simulate events, but for the interaction with the like combination of keys or I move the mouse or drag and drop for all this stuff, is better to use the interaction DSL from JEP. It is built on top of the WebDriver's action. 
And, uh, oh yeah, I didn't show you the config file, now that I remember. Oh. Because I told you that you can configure everything. In here I'm saying just use a Firefox driver. And if I want to use a Chrome driver, I can also use it. The only, the only special thing is you actually have to download the driver first and then you have to indicate where it is, um, but otherwise everything is the same. I indicate here my base URL and where I want to put my reports. But I, I, can, I can run my test, I can change the driver from one execution to the other, but I can also use a remote browser just because Selenium allows to do that and this is on top, so you have it. And for example, you can use one of these service, services that allows you to run your tests against a lot of different uh, browsers to be sure that uh, it will be displayed nicely in all of them. So some references. The official documentation in general is really good. Spock is really good, but the official documentation of Jeb is just Awesome. It's called the Book of Jeb, and you can find there almost everything. And otherwise, you have Stack Overflow. And there is a very nice talk about the authors and creators of Spock and Jeb together. Uh, it is uh, that link. Uh, it's really interesting, and I actually learned a lot when 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 learning Jeb. And that's all this work, I did it because I wanted to write a tutorial in, in, for, for this website that my company has that is called Adictos al Trabajo, but it's in Spanish. So this was some time ago and I just uh, update my, my work. And all this code, it is in my GitHub repo. So you can go there and just play and see how it's configured and the dependencies and all this stuff. And if you have any question, I will be very happy to answer. Thank you. So, questions? Yep. Is there any kind of uh, recording tool to save your tests? I mean... Yeah, like, yeah, like, like in video, everything. I didn't hear of it. I know that you can take pictures, and I, I, what I do know is you can use Jeb not only for tests, and for example, you can combine it with RC Doctor. I don't know if you know, if you ever heard of it. It's for document the code, like really nice. And with both together, you can just take pictures of your application and then store a picture of it in your documentation. So it gets generated every time you generate the documentation, it's an automatic documentation. So you always have an updated picture of your web. With Jeb you can do these kind of things, but I never heard of, of, of the video, video recording. No, 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 I don't mean the video recording. I mean, uh, in Salem you have a plugin mm -hmm. in the process so you can manually uh, click everywhere in your website oh. and, you have, and then record your test. Ah, 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 yeah, even if it doesn't fail, uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I never did it, but if you are able to record the, and to take pictures of your application for documentation, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, well, I imagine that it's not very difficult to reuse the same thing for recording and for take the pictures, not in only in Asti Doctor, but I, I never, I never tried. ASCII doctor, yeah, yeah, it's ASCII, yeah, sorry, <laughs> ASCII doctor, yeah, it's really nice, that's a different, really different talk, but a very, really good, nice uh, tool for documentation, and I just, uh, it allowed me to, to do my documentation, like, always update, I can even say, okay, in here you have to include this part of my code, and it's going to be included, like, in live, yeah, so I don't have to put it, it's going to yeah, be added automatically, these kind of things, like really cool. But you know Markdown is kind of similar to like Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's based on... Yep. Yes, in the first part of the presentation, uh, the demo was about uh, some 
simple things just like a uh, form and something like that. Yep. Okay. And then in the second part, there was, I think, an example with an Ajax call. With a? With an Ajax call. Yep. So, uh, do you think I uh, can with Spark, uh, does it work well with a uh, single page and this kind of application? Yeah, uh, there's actually no problem. You just have to module your, your content uh, differently. But otherwise, I mean, I, I've never used it for single pages, but it is, it is one of the things that you see that it, it can be done. Yeah, there's, there's no problem. Yeah. Uh, can you pass the Ajax call to the Spark page uh, why? <laughs> you want to do that? Instead of creating the page object template, if you can just go into the page with something. Like manually and like create HTML and this? No. I mean, I, I don't know if it can be done. Uh, the, the idea is that you want to test your real stuff. So you don't want to add HTML or put anything. You just want to test it. Thank you very much.